Hi everybody, I'm Randy Ridings, and this is the Quad Yak Coast to Coast. In 2013, my father and I built a human-powered amphibious velomobile. In 2018, I started a trip from the West Coast in Oregon, headed towards the East Coast. This playlist is a series of videos that will detail that trip. Each video will cover about a 10-day, two to 400 mile leg of this trip. I'm glad to have you with me and hope you follow along to the end. Good morning. It's Saturday the 30th, uh, day uh, 25. I'm still in Pendleton, but the quad deck is ready to roll. Got in on the bus about three o'clock. Uh, bike shop wasn't quite ready. Worked on it till they closed at 7 and they got it finished up. So it's about 5 o'clock in the morning. I'm going to get up and get ready. Let me show you what, we, what the bike shop did for me yesterday. I now have rear caliper brakes. I'm giving myself every advantage today and one of those things is I'm going to hit my inhaler. Alright, I've turned on Mission Road out of Pendleton. Uh, heading up to Old Immigrant Hill. Uh, Dead Man Pass. Dad and his two sons. Drove beside me for a couple minutes, took pictures, talked to me. I, I gotta kinda get used to that. But people stop and say, and I people stop and say, hey, I saw you in the highway. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, case in point. <laughs> Florida! Right on. Doing coast, yeah. coast to coast, thank you. Yeah, that was not staged. <laughs> I am now well known in Pendleton. All the people up at the bus stop and house burgers know me. All the bike shop people know me. Uh, the RV place up on the hill, Doug and his daughter Bailey and Luke. And it begins. Now I'm on the hill. I'm eight and a half miles into this. So I stopped at, I don't know, I think it was about two and a half. I've had my parking brake on ever since, but it's been dragging for six miles up this hill. It's like the fourth time I've forgotten that now. <laughs> oh, that little, that little fierce beast back there. Usually I can talk to him and settle him down, but he was having none of it. Oh, is he coming back? <laughs> but he can't figure out how to get to me. So I'm right at 10 miles today and at mile three in Umatilla County maybe Umatilla my heart rate is higher than it's been really been at about 115 120 today on the other hand I've been locked at about 132 so there's a road I came up way 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 down there that line down there is I-84 40 mile an hour curve ahead I better watch my 1.9 never mind I just had a visitor an older gentleman he's, he's been riding this hill for 40 years there are certain things that I just don't like on a road and cattle guards are one of them but there's a shot of uh, the down lane of I-84 below me. There's I-84 down there. You can now see east downhill. Oh, I'm about to do something I have not done in about 14 miles. I'm about to shift because I'm coming to the top of a hill. So I made it to the rest area at Dead Man Pass. All right, so I've done 22 miles um, in almost 10 hours. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to hang out here for a minute. I've kind of tightened up part of the front axle, but I don't really think that's going to do anything. I, I think there's some damage inside that sprocket. And the only thing that's going to fix that is put a new sprocket, which means taking the whole axle apart. Uh, Alright, it's about 
done 23 miles hoping to have just about seven to nine more to get to the park get to Legrand tomorrow back in a bike shop <laughs> two days on the road three days in a bike shop that kind of schedule I will not make it to Florida this summer um, but I'm not ready to give up yet either okay I am in Immigrant Springs uh, State Park so I ended up doing 29 and a half miles uh, I'm currently sending my all clear message to my daughter and my sister good morning it's July 1st uh, day 26 I did wake up at like 5 30 in the morning but it was raining and so I just went back to bed so now it's about almost 8 o'clock getting ready to go it's about 10 30 in the morning heading down to La Grande uh, I got about 25 miles most of it downhill La Grande oh you heard that that's what I gotta get fixed then I head up a hill the Grand, 25 miles. Okay, kind of an interesting thing happened at the park. This was Immigrant Springs. So far I've stayed at Ainsworth, LePage, and last night Immigrant Springs. Uh, the first one I paid $26 to be an RV park. The next night, I paid a tent site, $17. Park Ranger came back to buy, gave me $12 back. So I had hiker biker fees, state parks, five dollars a night he's like you tell him it's five dollars for hiker biker no matter if there's a hiker biker spot got in last night no hiker biker spot so I went ahead and paid seventeen dollars marked tent seventy dollars and then down the bottom put an X by other and wrote in hiker biker so I see a ranger driving by so I go out to talk to her so I've been told that hiker biker fees are five dollars we we don't have hiker biker spots i said well i know that he told me that hiker biker fees in every park are five dollars he says well he must be new i'm like well he's like 15 years older than you could have been new but he's like, well that's just wrong this morning i see a different ranger i'm bringing it up with her he's like you know i've heard that from another biker so my real gripe isn't that i'm getting charged too much it's that some park rangers think it's five dollars a night some bikers think it's five dollars a night the main problem is, is that there's there's this unknown, um, so people can't really plan. Oregon, you uh, you need to figure out what your policy is, and then get the word out. Just grab the left rear brake to stop it, and just nothing. Grab the right one real quick, and it stopped just fine. Came back here. I'm missing a brake shoe. Holy mackerel! So, so this is a, a very good uh, representation of what the last six miles has been like. You know, it's really fun trying to feather three out of four breaks. <laughs> I did six miles. I don't think I got below 14 miles an hour. I saw 27, I think. If you are uh, afraid of heights or windy roads, or if you're my sister Robin, who worries about my safety, uh, you should probably look away now. <laughs> try this at home. <laughs> uh, this is never ever going to work. A brake shoe is nothing but a piece of hard rubber and a bolt through it. I have bolts in my tool bag and I have a piece of hard rubber from a tire. It's 
pretty much exactly the same thickness this way. Found out I have a bolt, which I do. I gotta get a hole through it to about halfway through so that bolt head isn't up rubbing on the wheel. And here is my little puppy. My lovely little puppy that I will name him Jess. Because it just might work and it just might save my life. <laughs> It is on. Yeah. Maybe not quite as strong as the other side. You know how I said that was never going to work? Might have spoken too soon. So, there's, there's the real one. And there's the truck tire brake. Print me out a MacGyver certificate. <laughs> now, the real test is go down the hill seven miles to get to uh, exit where I'm gonna take a little break and it's pretty much seven miles downhill if I remember right good morning July 2nd day 27 um, I camped at Hillgard State Park about eight miles outside of Legrand because uh, I need to go to a bike shop tomorrow or today I didn't get up too early because bike shop probably not gonna open till 9 or 10 anyway I'm gonna get packed up and head in. I woke up about 5.30 this morning and it was cold. We have more casualties of the Onion War. There are dead everywhere. The Onion War of 2018. Yeah, very many dead, very sad. So this is Tuesday, the 3rd of July. Day 28, I believe. Just leaving Mountain Works Bikes in La Grande and Wit and his wife Mavis. Uh, gave me a place to work on this yesterday and then gave me a place to sleep last night and a shower and a breakfast and uh, didn't get much better than that. Well, I've been running with so many small problems for so long, I forget just how smooth and fast this thing can be. But I no longer have a wobble in that sprocket. I no longer hearing brakes um, squeaking. I'm now kind of at just normal cruising speed and I'm doing about 12 miles an hour. I should be able to start doing 50, 60 mile days, um, you know, back to back. Can't believe how quiet this thing's sounding right now. Oh, listen to this. So, Union, Oregon, cute little town, nice food, couple of good cafes. I've got about 15 miles to North Powder, which is the intersection of this uh, 237 and I-84 and Highway 30. I'm still hearing a little bit of that crunchy noise. There's something else still wrong with this thing. I might have a, one of the four bearings up front maybe going out. I could have a crack in the frame. It might be in here. It might be bottom bracket stuff. All right, 237 from Union to North Powder. Whenever I go through these cuts like this, I always keep a real close eye on these rocks, even though it is extremely rare that a mountain lion pounces on a human. This is where they would do it. Um, and Washington has them. They really ought to just drop a bike lane through all this so people would ride. Well, they really should drive, drop a bike lane across the United States. Really, two. They should go southeast to northwest and southwest to northeast. And then, like, two connectors one just on the like east side of the Rockies, maybe one just on the west side of the Appalachians. And you could go from just about anywhere in America to anywhere else in America on a bike lane. Look, somebody made a snowman. <laughs> I thought I was going to be close. To Missouri by mid-July. I've done trips before and I've averaged about 32 miles a day, 35 miles a day. You know, I started this not in the shape I needed to be in and going uphill. Not making the time I want, not averaging 32 miles a day, and then with uh, shuttling the RV is costing me as well. And you know, if I'm going to complete this trip this summer, I got to start. I start putting some monster days down, 50, 60, 70 mile days on a regular basis. Happy July 4th. Uh, this is Haynes, Oregon, and they're having their 4th of July celebration. This is downtown Baker, and back there is the G 
Geezer Grand Motel. Neat little downtowns. Started to upshift. I have broken that cable. I don't think I have a spare cable. Trimmed the cable off, squished one of those cable ends on there, and then I just dropped this whole mechanism. With any luck, I got gears. High gear in the back here. Middle. Low. Nice. So I am finally in that dreaded position of going uphill into a headwind. As of last night, I was pretty much officially had the farthest ride I've ever done. As far as just taking off and this is what I'm doing is doing a ride. Because I got to about a little over 400 miles last night. Up to then, the farthest ride had been around 400. That was the John Wayne Iron Horse Trail in Washington. Then I got to the Trail of Coeur d'Alene. I just rode it both ways. So that's like 74 miles each way. So that's like 148. And then down the Headwaters of Missouri from Helena to Great Falls, just over 100, 110. All that combined was 400. So I'm having to work to go downhill. I just went. I'm at 49 miles and I have a flat. I have been dodging steel belted rubber pieces for this whole hill. I can dodge all of them. I've got a tube. I'm going to swap tubes for now, I think. Uh, truck came around with a trailer, and I got hit with this. Right in the knee. Uh, at about 60 miles an hour. I think it probably just came off their trailer. But that hurt. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was kind of a surprise. It actually hit the guardrail a couple of times, and then smacked me in the leg. You know what I like seeing? Okay, I made it to Huntington. First guy I talked to offered me this patch of grass to put my tent in. He owns a restaurant down there, so I'm like, that's where I'm eating breakfast in the morning. And it fits, <laughs> just barely. Good morning, <clears throat> July 5th. It's about almost 60 miles yesterday. I slept in a little bit this morning, it's about six o'clock. So the wind's blowing a little bit this morning. <laughs> you know, you're in small towns when the deer are walking down the sidewalk. A little persimmon tree or something. Came in to get a little snack. That is the site of the original Oregon Trail down to this point. I stopped at a little place called Catfish Junction. Um, made about 12 miles since Huntington. Um, a strawberry fruit bar. Hanging out in the shade in a little community room. And they said that today it's supposed to be 101 degrees. I've done 20 miles. It stopped at 12, and so I wanted to do like another eight. I picked up a goat head, probably at that little shady stopped out with the abandoned house, because you know the yard was full of thistles and weeds and stuff. So that's kind of lesson learned out here. Don't get off the road too much. Anyway, I was very lucky to find a gentleman down in his yard. So me pull up under the tree and start bringing me out a bottle of water. And oh, for those of you who don't know what a goat head is, I say I picked up a goat head in my tire. It's a plant. It's shaped a little bit like a goat's head. It just has like a series of bristles sticking up. One of those thorns is almost always sticking straight up. And they're tough enough to go through tires and tubes. I had four flats on this trip and two of them in the last two days. One yesterday, one today. Because yesterday's was a piece of wire uh, from a truck tire. And then today's was a goat head. This is kind of unbelievable. Now I had my third flat in two days. So this is the one that flatted on the highway yesterday. That's the one that flatted from the goat head today. And this is the one that just flatted. And the third failure was for a third reason. It was patch failure. And I assume just because of the heat, um, it softened up. Can't even begin to tell you how frustrating today is. Ended up doing 43 miles. And uh, had two more flats. Well, the patches just aren't holding. Uh, Thing because of the heat, but it's just old glue or whatever. One final note: I went across the time zone, so it is 9:44. Good morning, Friday, July 6th. I started on June 6th, which means I've been going for a month. Well, I'm in uh, a rest area at about mile marker two, and by two, I mean two miles into 
Idaho. <laughs> I am out of Oregon. I love Oregon. Uh, so I've ridden completely through one time zone. You know, kind of doing stuff that seems like I'm making progress. <laughs> so I got up this morning, had another flat. The good news is, on the way back from the campground, found a Bimark and bought two new uh, tubes that I'm almost out of food. And that's a good thing, because I should make my RV tonight. So what that means is I planned how much food to take very well. Just wanted to mention just how bad Idaho shoulders are. And this is why. It's got this like pea gravel stuff slow me down to like five miles an hour on a flat so here's how much of a drag this is uh, I am parked on a hill no brakes and my rig will not even roll backwards good morning a whole lot's happened since the last video one of the things that happened is I filled up every one of my SD cards and uh, so I went about two days without filming anything we got to Nampa got there on late on the night of the 6th Today is the 8th, so day 32, I think. And um, I'm driving to Idaho Falls. I got a final place to park the, the RV. It's actually only about 9 o'clock in the morning. I'm probably an hour out of town, and this takes me straight into Idaho Falls, and I might actually hit the 11.15 bus today and be back in Nampa at 9 o'clock tonight. And I'll map out the bus station first, look right around the neighborhood of the bus station for a place to park this thing. So, I'm in Idaho Falls, Idaho State Police. Yeah, maybe I could park there. Bus terminal is in here somewhere. All right, Idaho Highway, I might not like you very much, but I like the Idaho State Police. So they're letting me park in their lot. Now I gotta get my bus bag together, all my stuff, uh, and get back. I got an hour get back to the bus station which is a quarter mile down the road uh the highway patrol guys man the people are just great pull in and and we want to we want a picture of it in front of a, a a state trooper car with a bunch of the guys i'm like okay <laughs> when i get in the rv i take everything that i'm absolutely still gonna keep with me and i dump it into one tub pretty much at the end of every day i just i just replace everything in that tub so when i get ready to go i just take the contents of that tub and carry it with me in this bag, I got two new front tires. I'm gonna go ahead and put two new tires on. I got two brand new tubes in there. Brought two new tubes for the rear tires. Okay, so I made the bus. Uh, on the way back, this is a, one of the faster transitions, at least so far. Good morning. It is July 9th, Monday morning, about seven o'clock in the morning. Uh, Got back in, the boys are last night, and my host, Stan, came and picked me up. Join me in the next video where I post the next leg of this trip. You can also follow along on the Quad Yaks Facebook page, and check out my other Quad Yak videos in the other playlist that shows how we built it and other trips I've done with it. I filmed about 100 hours this summer of this trip, and I'm not even done yet. If you want to see all of it, you can visit my Patreon page, or if you just want to support me uh, and the trip and my videos and future projects, please check that out. Put a link below so you can find that and support me. I hope you do. Thanks very much. I'm Randy Writings, and this is the Quad Yak Coast to Coast Trip.